Welcome back to Degree Listless, everybody. Basically, the YouTube equivalent of a museum where no one has ever learned anything. I'm your host, Shanghai Pete, 21st century digital boy, the last Boy Scout, and the People's Champion. It's been quite an eventful few days since we last gathered here with the reviled and reprehensible gaming industry doing what it does best. Infuriating customers, scamming people out of their hard-earned money, and then backtracking in a panic whenever anyone notices. And during the holidays, no less. Tisk tisk. Sounds like we better be getting deep inside right away. We begin, as we often do, with just a quick recap of the week, and it was dominated by the fallout <laughs> from the release of the PC version of Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 Midgard Venture Intergrade. Though I do love any excuse to thoroughly excoriate that worthless piece of disrespectful and manipulative garbage, I must admit that even I was caught off guard by the amount of backlash to this. Unfortunately, no, the backlash wasn't to the inherently exploitative nature of the release model or the disastrous retcon menagerie of filth that the plot degenerated into. It was mostly a result of the performance of the game, actually, or rather the lack thereof. Yep, the gang's all here, from anemic graphic options to rampant stuttering issues and even the ability to play the game at all tied to its DRM in the fucking goddamn Epic Game Store, which conveniently went down soon after release. The tale of misery woven by this horrific port seems far from over. Will anyone learn their lesson? Ever? <laughs> I doubt it. As seemingly gets proven anew with each passing day, the general public is simply too fucking stupid to think for themselves when confronted by the mass brainwashing and dopamine addiction that social media drowns them in 24-7. This game sucks, let's buy it anyway. This MMO is a ripoff, let's resubscribe. This movie's a pile of shit, let's go get COVID and pay to see it. Everything is the red team's fault, let's censor the internet. Everything is the blue team's fault, let's overthrow the government. I don't know how much more insanity I can take, to be honest. Um, but we were talking about the abysmal PC port of FF7 Fuckface Edition. My bad, I, I get carried away sometimes. Though I am loath to blindly trust Digital Foundry's judgment, or anyone's for that matter. After all, they called the PS5 version of this trash fire a stunning upgrade. Looks like they may be a bit closer to the mark this time, tweeting out a simple... The PC port is terrible. Ho <laughs> ho ho ho! Even 70 fucking dollars or upwards of 100 plus in some regions won't get you a quality game these days. How much money exactly must one spend in order to get a playable, decent game now? That's the question they want you asking, and of course the answer is, well, how much you got? If you keep paying it, they'll keep asking for more. No variable frame rate option, no way to tweak anti-aliasing, can't toggle V-Sync, or turn off motion blur. <laughs> no problem, that'll still be 70 fucking dollars, please. Don't want dynamic resolution scaling to drop you down to 1080p even though you're on a 4K graphics card? Too bad, bitch! No way to turn it off. Doesn't matter that they're asking you to pay an insane premium price for a game that they were giving away for fucking free on PS Plus earlier this year, or that it runs on an engine created, licensed, and sold by the same company whose digital storefront they're gatekeeping the release on, the customer can get fucked for all Square Enix cares. Happy holidays, losers! Moving on, let's briefly continue the proud tradition of mocking access in legacy media. Anyone happen to see the articles devoted to the cat ears in Halo for some fucking reason? Polygon, VG247, even PC Gamer, an outlet I usually like, are all jumping on the OMG cat ears weeaboo circle jerk. Though, in fairness, PC Gamer did spend most of their 300 or so words on it trying to both sides the issue. For fuck's sake, guys, like... <laughs> Really? Th this is what we're writing articles about? I mean, I could understand, like, one shit site like Polygon or something doing a blurb about it, but three, four, five different fucking outlets all writing about cat ears in motherfucking Halo? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what the fuck? Like... This is really where we're at, huh? I mean, I get that you're all losing money to idiot YouTubers, like myself even, who have the gall to tell the truth and simply call shit like it is. It's an insane concept, I know. But surely there's a better way, right? What's the matter, guys? All your debased, knob-slobbing, and unabashed defense of vacuous garbage fires like FF7 Integrate didn't earn you enough money from the marketing departments of AAA publishers? How sad for you. What a tragedy. And for those of you wondering, the cat ears will cost you a whopping 10 fucking dollars. So if you live here in the States, you would have to work for more than an hour at minimum wage in order to put some fucking cat ears on your digital master chief. Fucking fantastic. I mean, we live in a world where so many people said yes, please to stuff like horse armor, pay to most, buying cosmetics, <laughs> they don't affect the gameplay, armor dyes and weapon skins that, well, now we're getting what we deserve and we're reaping what we've sown. Hope everybody's happy, we asked for this. 
And no, PC Gamer, they are not awful damn cute. They're just awful. And you, along with game journalists everywhere, should be ashamed of yourselves, for fuck's sake. Ugh. All right, for our main story tonight, we're going to talk about something that miraculously manages to be even worse than digital cat ears for the Master Chief. That's right. NFTs, otherwise known as non-fungible transactions, or better yet, nothing fucking there. And why are we talking about this dumb shit, you might ask? Well, because, perhaps predictably, the eternally ravenous gaming industry, always eager to jump on the next exploitation bandwagon, recently set their sights on a brand new opportunity to wring even more money out of their increasingly destitute and abused customer base. Yeah, the NFT. It's coming to gaming. Fucking awesome. Now, perhaps foolishly, I was really hoping that common sense would prevail and I'd be able to avoid this topic entirely, but, well, <laughs> serves me right for having the audacity to cling to any semblance of hope whatsoever in this cursed age we're living in. Fuck me, right? Apparently, people need to be told directly that spending absurd amounts of money, or indeed any amount of money, on JPEGs is fucking stupid. Now, that's not to say that it's not possible to make money in this silly little arena of volatility. Of course it is, the same way it's possible to make money in crypto. Are lots of people getting lucky and profiting off this kind of stuff, either by having gotten in early or essentially gambling and getting lucky? Yeah, absolutely. Will you? No, you will not. And I mean that statistically speaking, of course, so miss me with the anecdotal, I know a guy. I I'm sure you do. We all do. Now, if you don't know what NFTs are, don't worry. You don't need to because they don't really exist. They're nothing more than digital ephemera that a blockchain register somewhere says technically belong to you. A digital copy of a thing that no one cares about. Great. So now we've thought of a way to charge people for pressing Control-C. Just fucking fantastic. Now, if you're thinking that's fucking stupid, that's because it is. Anything digital, whether it's a JPEG, horse armor, idiotic cat ears for your favorite sci-fi cyber guy, they can't belong to anyone because they can just be copied and redistributed indefinitely. They don't require resources to reproduce. That's half the point of the internet and computers in general. NFTs accomplish nothing. They add nothing. They create nothing. They are black holes of fancy worded nothing meant to siphon money away from anyone dumb enough to throw it in there. They are manifest uselessness and they poison anything that they touch. So, of course, the ruinous video game industry wants to touch the fucking shit out of them. Yep, it's not enough to drain all the fun and enjoyment out of games and then charge people to buy it back piecemeal from the very companies responsible for removing it in the first place. It's not enough to exploit children by tricking them into charging things that used to be free to their parents' credit cards while they're playing soccer games. It's not enough to manipulate you with your own data harvesting from your own game playing habits. It's not enough to intentionally design gameplay in a way that has you looking for ways to pay to make it less shitty. It's not enough to reorient the entire industry around predatory practices that gouge customers using techniques designed by an army of accountants and sinister data analysts. It's not even enough to continuously jack game prices up at a time when your customers are experiencing record-breaking poverty and your company is experiencing record-breaking profits. Nope. Culture anchored by greed in a society defined by profit created from artificial scarcity always needs more. Enough is never enough. And figuring out a way to forcibly cram scarcity up the ass of the already ragged and floundering internet is just the latest play to rape your wallet. Selling digital nothings that people only want because you're selling them. Sounds like a natural fit for the gaming industry, actually, doesn't it? So, how's that going? Let's ask Ubisoft first. Now, I know what you're thinking. I heard about that and I, th I thought they were backing off. And no, you silly little catfish, they are not. I'm a silly little catfish. While it's true that their recently announced NFT platform Quartz was met with an expected amount of backlash, guess what? They're doing it anyway because fuck you. Sure, people said they hated it, but that no longer matters because like any significantly large company, Ubisoft has internal numbers and data analysis that says it'll make them money despite whatever backlash your preferred social media brain chemistry manipulation app is showing you. Oh yes, Quartz is a go. So what the fuck is it exactly? Well, to quote from a Eurogamer article, Quartz is an NFT platform for unique items in AAA games, which it says will run on energy efficient technology. So much of that out there, right? That uses a million times less energy than a Bitcoin transaction. However much the fuck that is. The first Ubisoft game to offer NFTs will be Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, oh boy, where Quartz will be integrated in beta form on PC. 
These NFTs, creatively named digits, will be in-game cosmetic items. Oh, wow. Awesome, such a new idea, right? So well received, something everybody loves. With a unique code visibly stamped on. Oh, that's great, right? But you haven't even heard the best part. This serial coded cosmetic can then be kept or sold again with its previous ownership history locked. Uh, hooray? Sounds familiar though, right? So how exactly are these things different from regular cosmetics that you're already being gouged for and games are already being ruined in the name of? Well, see, that's where the brilliant minds at Ubisoft come in. They aren't different at all. That's the genius of it. Do a bunch of things that essentially cost the company nothing. Rename a few things here, Photoshop some stuff over there, move a few ones and zeros around on the blockchain somewhere else, and then just demand customers give you more money. I mean, after all, you've already trained them to think spending money to buy things that don't exist is perfectly normal. This is just the next logical step. Now, if by some chance you haven't blown your brains out yet and you're still here, there's something else that you may have noticed from that depressing description of Ubisoft's Quartz platform. Seems to be a lot of focus on the energy saving aspects of this, doesn't there? Their press release brags about energy efficient technology that uses a million times less energy than a Bitcoin transaction. Ubisoft says that Quartz will be energy efficient because it uses Tezos, a blockchain which claims to use exceedingly less energy to operate than proof of work blockchains such as Bitcoin or Ethereum. Well, now that's an interesting word choice there. A blockchain which claims to use less energy than Bitcoins. Now, why do you suppose it's phrased so specifically? Would have made for a much stronger statement to simply say a blockchain which does use less energy than Bitcoins, right? But they don't say that, do they? You know why? Because it's not fucking true. They go on to provide a bunch of empirically worthless but rhetorically impressive stats about how one transaction uses the same amount of energy as 30 seconds of streaming video. But despite that, they still had to use the word claims when referring to its actual energy consumption. And that's because they can't prove it. If they could, it wouldn't just be a claim, it would be a fact and simply stating it wouldn't require qualifying language like the word claim. But all that aside, this still makes for a pathetically poor justification. You still aren't offering anything. You know it uses even less energy than Tezos, your insipid cosmetics, or any type of blockchain? Not selling NFTs in the fucking first place. All this worthless proselytizing about minimizing energy use. You're just solving a problem that you created because you decided your CEO didn't have enough yachts and you thought you could maybe get him a few more without having to make a new game. Fuck you. As you might expect, Ubisoft has since responded to the backlash in typical encouragingly obtuse and disingenuous corpo speak by saying, We have received a lot of feedback since the announcement, and we hear both the encouragement and the concerns. We understand where the sentiment towards the technology comes from, and we need to keep taking it into consideration every step of the way. Translation, we knew you wouldn't like it, and we don't care, we're doing it anyway. They went on to say, this experiment is meant to understand how the value proposition of decentralization can be received and embraced by our players. We know it is a major change that will take time, but we will stay true to our three principles. Ah. Translation, we just want to see how much money we can trick you into giving us for this bullshit, and based on that, we'll then decide how deep we're going to cram our dick down your throat. What are those three vaunted principles, you ask? The three pillars of moral righteousness that are destined to stand firm and ensure Ubisoft remains stalwart in their deference to the better angels of their nature. Well, apparently Ubisoft expected that the news they possessed any sort of morality or guiding principles at all would come as a surprise to most people, so they conveniently offered further explanation, saying the following. Those principles are to use tech responsibly and build a safe environment for players to explore how NFTs work, only leverage energy efficient proof of stake blockchains, and focus on meaningful value propositions for players that benefit their gaming experience. Uh -huh. In perhaps what is a colossal understatement, Eurogamer's article rightly commented that, so far it's unclear exactly what value NFTs can bring to gaming that may benefit the experience of players. On the other hand, it is very clear what they can bring to gaming that will benefit the experience of the companies making them. Which is to say, of course, by increasing their profits by absurd amounts through the continued exploitation of their customers. Now, I did a little digging, and as it turns out, the real three principles are manipulate, exploit, and then lie about all the manipulating and exploiting you're doing. 
I don't know about you, but that sounds a little bit closer to the mark. See, this is actually a strategy employed by many industries. The entire concept of these so-called principles is a misdirection to begin with. By trotting these out, journalists, who are by and large simpletons at best, are tricked into focusing on all these reasons why what the company is doing is no big deal. See, you propose something immoral, then you create some bullshit that sounds like you're self-regulating so people relax. That way, everyone is distracted and no one thinks to ask if maybe you could just not do this at all. By creating the illusion of self-imposed oversight, you move everyone right past the conversation of whether or not it should even be done in the first place, and instead the discussion is around how it should be done. That it's going to happen is already a foregone conclusion. Sneaky sneaky. It's important to remember, NFT is just another way to say more expensive microtransaction, which itself is a shorter way of saying, we don't make games that are fun anymore, we make games that make money. The other high-profile gaming NFT story is, of course, Stalker 2 and their immediate reversal following the high-profile backlash to the initial announcement. Originally, developer GSC Game World had announced its game would have its own metaverse that players can inhabit as a, get this, a meta-human, an NFT in the form of an NPC. The game will use blockchain technology to let the community own a piece of Stalker 2 as users register for in-game item drops that will evolve into a new gaming feature built on top of Stalker 2. In other words, again, more expensive microtransactions. Don't be fooled by all this ridiculous made-up language created by adding meta to ordinary words. There is nothing new here. They go on to say that the first of those drops will be an auction in January of next year for players to become the first ever metahuman at because that's a real thing, right? A non-playable character rendered in high detail in the game world. Okay, so first, that's the most retarded thing I have ever heard. Just what I want to pay a couple hundred dollars for, right? My face stuck to an NPC that'll then be teabagged in-game endlessly and used for an eternity in all manner of nauseating Rule 34 SFM videos. Quite a privilege indeed. I, I can't imagine why that was so unpopular. I won't give the rest of their initial announcement the courtesy of discussing it further. Suffice to say, it's a bunch of fucking made-up words, flowery language, and excuses to gouge people. That's it. So right about now you might be thinking, but Shanghai Pete, they did the right thing in the end, didn't they? I heard they canceled that, and you would be correct, they did indeed. A few days ago, in a post shared by the official Stalker Twitter account, GSC wrote, We hear you. Based on the feedback we received, we've made a decision to cancel anything NFT-related in Stalker 2. The interests of our fans and players are the top priority for the team. We're making this game for you to enjoy, whatever the cost is. If you care, we care too. Now, at first glance, that seems very altruistic and sincere. Good guy stalker too, Dev. Doing the right thing, right? Wrong. The fact that they even tried to push something as absurd and anti-consumer as NFTs in the first place belies the very first sentence. The interests of our fans and players are the top priority for the team. Um... Excuse me, but if that were the case, you never would have even tried to do this to begin with. Just like Square Enix insisting you hand over $70 for Integrate on PC, GSC was simply seeing what they could get away with. It's just that, unlike Ubisoft, they don't have the resources to force people to deal with it even if they hate it. GSC Game World's a much smaller company, so for now they'll have to acquiesce to the demands of their paying customers. <laughs> it's insane, I know. Respecting the wishes of your customers, what the fuck is this? Again, not because they care or give a shit, but because they don't have enough money to force you to deal with it. Two very different things. I guess if we're reaching, though, we can call this a win. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the first Stalker game and was looking forward to this. So the news that they're scrapping the NFT plan means I'll actually be able to play it after all. So that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool, I guess. That's what qualifies as a victory these days, boys. Hooray. Who fucking ray. So that's the story on NFTs, ladies and gents, just made up words used to sell you made up shit that doesn't exist and no one wants. It's an effort to force scarcity onto the internet and by extension, gaming. One of the last places where abundance is still relatively unrestricted and copying data is effectively free. All just to find more ways to punish, demoralize, and exploit anyone who isn't wealthy. Yep, that's right. Disaster capitalism has seriously reached a point where they're now trying to charge you to press control C. And you want to know the worst part? Now, I haven't looked to confirm because I value what remains of my sanity, but I would be willing to bet that there's already a litany of crypto bros and bootlicking pro corpo morons out in force defending this perverse garbage. And that's because we're in hell. 
that's our show. Thank you so much for watching and spending this little bit of your free time with us tonight. I know these are dark times, but it is the holidays, so let's try to be thankful for the things that we do have. I know that's a bit rich coming from someone who just spent the last 15 minutes or so screaming, cursing, and bitching about stuff, but it's the thought that counts, you know? There are some good games out there and some devs that are still making quality stuff. One of my viewers actually recommended Eastward recently for the Switch, so I started playing that a few days ago, and I'm happy to report that they were absolutely right. It's totally awesome, even though it starts out in a mine. So that's something great right there. We're also getting ready to launch the Patreon in the coming months, so that's super fun too. In the meantime, though, we wish you and your family a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. We love you today, and we love you all the way. See you next year, everybody. Just, just woke up, smoke up, and I pass out. Pass, pass out. Huh? Woke up, what up, smoke up, and I'm back down.